we'll do some faces here. <clears throat> so when I'm going to draw a face, what I start with is sort of an oval. Uh, kind of like that. Like in terms of structure, I like to think there's a sphere and then like the chin extends down a bit and the eyes, like the line where the eyes are is about halfway down and divided. So this would be like looking at the front. And if I turn this to the side, I guess let's do that. It's your circle and then you have kind of a a chin thing going down there. So this is like my generic skull geometry. So this is front and side. So then from there, what I will do is I'll usually kind of pop out the cheeks a little bit. Um, and then I used to like, I'll run the cheeks way back, but now I'm trying to keep it a little more forward. So this is kind of the cheek structure here. And then the muzzle, I try to start it like the nose ridge line, just slightly above like where the eye line is. Uh, and then I'll draw the muzzle down here. Kind of like that. So from the side then, the nose ridge line starts just a little bit above there. Kind of angles down a little bit. Like that. And then you have the cheeks, which kind of come down a little bit like that go a little bit forward of this sort of downward slope straight from the skull and then they come back in. And then the nose, maybe follow a little bit of an arc down that way and then put the nose in. For the eyes, I try to just start with some generic lines like this. Like where would they be if the eyes were just kind of relaxed shut? And then like the ridge of the eyebrow come up like that. And this is movable because this is where the eyebrows go. So if they're more alert or more surprised, I guess it would go up. And then where the actual eyeball goes in there, it forms a crease. a little bit more if they're open. Do that and then the eyelashes kind of flare out a little bit like that.
Um, let's see. What, oh, yeah, mouth obviously would probably be a good choice for next. I try to draw a line straight down from the nose. And then you don't want to go too far. It's an easy mistake I make a lot, is going too far down where the mouth would go. So now, depending on where you place the cheeks, like this line where it goes up and where it hits there, that's where it stops and forms that little corner. Cheek is gonna hang. Maybe give it a little bit of kind of upward lift there. Well, depending on who we're gonna draw. Like those little details can determine who it is. I guess where the ears attach, like this would be the part of the head they'd go on, I think, and then it's kind of a tough thing to do, place the ears properly, and I'll admit I kind of cheat, I try to hide that attachment point under hair a lot. <laughs> It's not just me. It's a common, common thing to do that, especially like in animation. You'll notice like there's no formulaic ear attachment for Don Bluth designs, especially. And the more I draw, the more I see Don Bluth inspiration in, in like my design stuff. And then the eyes. I've been doing this on a separate layer lately because it's like you shift the eyes one pixel and it totally seems to change the, the character of the drawing, the expression. And I'll demonstrate that in just a second. But when I draw the eyes, like the eyelid will actually cast a shadow on... Is this the iris? What's like the colored part of the eye? Is it the iris? I think that's the iris. Anyways. The pupil? Pupil is the dark part in the middle.
Yeah, the ears are not symmetrical. Things are shifting to the right in this image here. <laughs> But that's, you know, uh, one thing when you're drawing faces, you try to never draw them straight on. Because trying to get them perfectly symmetrical, just one, it doesn't look natural. And two, it's hard to do. It's so much easier to draw a face on a three-quarter or side view. I don't know why, but it is. So... And honestly, if I checked the symmetry of this picture, it'd probably be way off. But it seems to look okay to me for the most part. So. Oh, crap. I just drew all that stuff on the wrong layer. Hang on. I can fix this. Alright. Eyes. So now, like... That's a little bit creepy, actually, moving the eyes around. But you see what I mean? Just shifting them a few pixels to the left or the right. A hair line. Like where the hair starts and stops? Uh, I guess that would be... Let me do a different color here. I guess it would kind of do maybe like that. What was his name in the Munsters? Was he Eddie? The kid? The vampire kid? This is where I would draw the hair, and on the side... Oh, I didn't draw the ears on the side view. Um, so, let me fix that. Oh, I'll do the ears in blue. Like the ear attachment, I guess. I try to do it like there. forward, but that's fine. And then the hairline here, I guess you would have sideburns, right? And then I'd go like that and go all the way back to like where the head joins the neck on the very back. And then the hair would just go out from there. I guess if this were human ears, let's do a green color. If this were human ears, like I think the proper placement would be like about that. But then that interferes with our cheek design, so yeah. I guess it's a very subjective thing. It doesn't have. There's no perfect way to do it. I mean, it's that's my method, and that's how I do it. Three quarter view. Okay, so let's do a three quarter view. So let's start with the circle, and then we do our kind of chin mechanism here. This would be like the proto face neck. So, all right. Uh, first, I guess we. What I like to do is on these three quarter views, start with that nose ridge and then kind of draw where the muzzle goes. Uh, 
and then define the cheeks. So the cheek would maybe go like that. And then, all right, we'll do the eyes. And then the eyebrow ridges. Now here, to sort of represent, you know, when the because this part right here in the eyebrow kind of has a curve like that. So when I'm drawing this side of the three-quarter view, I sink that in. It's concave. And do a little bit of more accentuated eyebrow meat, I guess, would be like this part up here. And I do this a little bit of the same up here. I try to hint to that. Since this is a little bit easier to see here, that's the ridge of the nose. All right, and then I crease, and then this just shaped differently because of that concave shape a little bit. So yeah, that that curve is going to go more to this side here. Happy little trees. It's like when an eye from the side, you look at it, and the top of the eyelid is kind of curved like that. And the eye goes in, right? That's your cheek. Anyways, the more you turn it to the side, the more this part here is going to shift to that same side, just because of the shape. And then the cheeks go down. That further helps the shape of the muzzle. That sort of nose, top of the nose line, I guess. That part of the nose. Also, right here, the angle of the head determines like which side gets more eyelashes on the top row. hits that cheek, you get that little pocket in there.
The rule of thumb I try to use when, like, you can't see where this cheek goes because it vanishes behind the side of the muzzle, right? So, what I try to do here is this line will follow through to the chin. It'll come in a little bit and it'll go like that. this clean up that skull a little bit and then we have the ears Mouth open. Ah, yes. Much harder. <laughs> um, okay, so let me see which layers she's on here, and I'll draw some alternate versions. So. Yeah, it is because the jaw structure. It's 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 harder to do because the jaw structure is different. So let me draw like what I envision as the jaw structure in here. So it attaches at the temple, and it kind of goes down, and you have the teeth in here. Like that's what I see when. try to figure out how this would happen. And I drew over my example. <laughs> uh, let me see if I can undo this a little bit. So... When we try to make the mouth open, Maybe raise the lip a little bit. And then the teeth would show in here. So yeah, I would say start with the upper part first and then do the bottom part separately because that's the part that hinges. So then we'll go down and it will hinge from this point, right? So let's just draw a straight line down like that. And your teeth would be in there and 
your tongue. And then this line that we talked about before where the cheek kind of vanishes behind the nose, bring that down and continue it. Open mouth. The chin from below. That's tough. And even I struggle with that one. So, let's see. Let's try to do this. And I may trip and fall, but I'm always learning and shape right and let's see the muzzle nose would go up like that and you know there are rules to be broken in all this stuff there's no right or wrong way to do it, and sometimes exaggerating it or doing it wrong in a certain view will get you a better result. That looks better. But one of the things to think about when you're doing the muzzle and upside down is that so this part here like right here that curve comes down and out so when you're looking at it from the bottom it's going to be a little bit inverted and it reminds me of the way like the Berenstain Bears are drawn uh, so instead of you know I could go down and up like that no that's wrong you go up and then down and then the cheek would flare out. Kind of like that. drawing these kind of lower angles, honestly, because I still have trouble with them. chin. I mean, you'd have, if you're looking at the geometry of it, it would come down like that, maybe. And this is probably very, very, very bad, but I guess it's okay. And see the other eye, you wouldn't even see it. You might, I mean, you get a hint to the, the eyebrow behind there. And this would come up a little bit. And maybe a little bit of the fuzz from the other cheek visible underneath where the neck goes. And like, here's another thing I struggled with is like, where do you stop drawing the line? below that sort of cheek 
cheeky jawline. I don't know. I don't have a right answer for that one. You just gotta try to make it look right. And then the ears. The other ear would be back there. Draw it below that. Yeah, I agree. Uh, when these turn out right, or when they turn out looking nice, it's a great feeling, but man, it's hard to get it looking right from an angle from underneath. It really is. And that may be because typically humans are not used to seeing heads that way. That's my theory on it. Because when we look at people, we tend to kind of tilt our heads down and tilt our eyes up and look at them. I guess, unless you're really short. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking up at people's faces the whole time. But, anyways. The head from behind, three quarters. Okay. So that would be the back, and then you're looking at this. So, the thing you want to pay attention to here is the line of the cheek, because that's going to determine a lot about the facial, <clears throat> excuse me, facial structure. And that line is going to go something like that. So now we start to put it together. That's why I just realized that sort of proto face I draw, it's like a welding mask. <laughs> With the visor and there's the strap that goes on the head. Anyways, okay. Back to the task at hand, drawing three-quarter back view of the head. So what we'll try to do here is try to find, draw the back kind of half of that sphere and try to find where the muzzle would go if we're looking at the rear end of it. So. Something like that. And that would come through. And since we drew this ridge, this is the line of like the eyebrow and that sort of eye socket. And then that's the cheek. And since this cheek is kind of a puffy thing, maybe it would come back to about here. So that's the cheek structure. the neck and then I try to like draw where the neck would attach to the back of the sphere and then you can kind of draw that line to go where the spine would go and the shoulders so the three-quarter head is from behind is pretty easy and depending on how fluffy the cheeks are you might get a little bit more of that on the back there and then, all right, let's do the nose. Maybe make the kind of upper lips come back a little bit. Stick the chin out a little bit more. And 
And then the eye, you might get a little hint of that kind of eye shape from back here. And that may not technically be correct, but I like the way it looks, so I'm putting it in that way. Yeah, if the muzzle is visible in the three-quarter view, eh. I don't know. It's it's another one of those subjective things. Does it look good to you? If yes, then good. <laughs> if not, I don't know. And you know, now that I look at this, this eye is probably too low. Let's move it up a little bit. Sometimes you just gotta say it looks good enough. The neck is back too far, I think. Let's fix that. Yeah. Don't be afraid to cheat when you draw. That's the most important thing. <laughs> Top view. Good idea. All right. Really, since it's that welding mask kind of structure, you really wouldn't see much different there, uh, other than a circle from the top. Uh, so then maybe the cheeks kind of puff out a little bit there. So we'll get the cheek structure first, because that would be the most obvious kind of defining thing. And then the muzzle from the top. And this is probably the least attractive view of anything you could have. And once again, we probably never, ever see anybody from these angles. But there would be the ridge line for where the nose and the forehead kind of meet. 
And then your eyebrows would kind of come out a little more like that. triangle on the forehead that you have like right here where that's just like there's nothing there that's just goes right to skull and then there's meat around it you know uh, so that would be right here <coughs> excuse me and that would be that kind of place here where it curves in and meets the cheek. see the eyes from this angle. Really this view is probably more just for seeing structure than anything else. How it all goes together. It does look like Wily e. Coyote. Uh. High expressions. Ah, uh, that's a good one. Uh, well, generally, the more surprised somebody is, like their wider their eyes are going to be open. Right, so, and the more shocked or whatever, the more alert they are, their eyes are going to look smaller. So if you do a, a big open eye like that, it's going to look surprised. Yeah, when, when you have, see, let's take this eye here and we'll duplicate it and I'll draw another version. Oops. When the eyes, like the, is to, I decide that's the pupil or the iris. <laughs> the pupil is the dark part, the iris is the colored part. So when you have a bigger eye like that, it looks much more relaxed. And eyes don't really do this in real life, but, you know, eh, part of doing this kind of thing is to exaggerate emotion and, 
you know, kind of blatantly state the obvious with visual cues. So obviously this eye looks much more, you know, alert and scared or whatever. And this is relaxed. Even though it's the same eye, that little bit goes a long way. Yeah, I did. I try to do. I guess kind of superhero-y eyes with emotional effects in the actual, you know, iris of the eye. So. I guess I, I try not to make them Disney huge. <laughs> you can still like do a lot of expression with uh, smaller eyes. But here's another thing. Uh, where is she? Let's duplicate this and we'll give her a different emotional state. Let's move her over here so we can see better. So, all right. Say we want to make her look more angry. Let's rename this. Uh, first thing is the eyebrows are going to come down. This part of the eye... Like when you move, when you express, you'll notice this part of the eyebrow doesn't really move a whole lot. It's more the inner part near the center of your forehead. Like that part is much more flexible. So those would come down. You'd get a little bit of furrowing in that skull triangle up here. And you'll get shadows under this, like this other triangle here forms. And this little ridge will come up a little bit higher. And then here's where we narrow the eyes. The lower eyelid will come up a little more. In an angry state. And just like how the eyebrows work, the center part of the eye near the middle of the forehead is much more mobile than the outer part. So the outer part, well, this right here, that'll stay mostly the same. Uh, and then as this eyebrow comes down, that crease where the eye actually is will come down a little bit and cover it some, like their f fold will form, and lower that part.
And then let's get rid of her happy expression here. When you're scrunching your face up, your lip's going to come out a little bit more than before. jaws moving forward we also have to move that cheek stuff forward a little bit so it doesn't look quite so wonky So, from happy to, like, screw you, <laughs> Where's to do bunnies? Alright, so... Let's take her face and we'll bunnify it. could do a quick quick show on this um, so bunnies usually have shorter muzzles rounder cheeks Shaped, I guess. At least when I draw them. And their nose is more of a like a slit than they don't really have flesh there. They have flesh like underneath. these days like the nose ridge on a rabbit is going to be maybe a little bit wider and more fleshy than say a fox or a canine just the facial features in general I try to make a little rounder Them. 
may be a little excessive. <laughs> Let me take it down a notch. These bunny ears are straight up. Like the uh, the thing about rabbit ears is they are very expressive. They can go in any angle. They can be you know kind of rigid. They can be floppy. They can do lots of different things with them. This is just for example's sake. And you all can go and start drawing your happy little heads. <laughs> Happy little trees. Alright guys, I'm gonna wrap it up. Uh, and I will post this video somewhere. Thank you for watching and thank you for uh, helping me get this tutorial made. I hope it's helpful.